Yesterday, you may have seen a video about building an industrial scale robocaller. I decided to take that video down and destroy all the physical copies because even though it's an obvious joke, it's not the right way to be using those tools. But the good news is that I recut that video and it keeps the most important part intact, which is building a scheduled task queue with Firebase cloud functions. And make sure to leave a comment on this video for the t-shirt giveaway, even if you left a comment on the original. And lastly, I just want to take a second to say thank you for supporting the channel. 2019 has already exceeded my expectations and the video idea list seems to get longer and longer. Just don't expect any robocaller tutorials anytime soon. Tell them to call me ASAP as possible. Thanks. Americans get at least 5 billion spam robocalls per month, and that number gets bigger and bigger every year. Personally, I get at least 10 of those calls per day, and I finally just decided if you can't beat them, join them. In today's video, we're going to not build a robocaller using and a brand new cloud function type from Firebase. But more importantly, we're going to build a task runner that allows us to schedule any backend code to run at any time. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can find the full source code on Fireship.io. And leave a comment below for a chance to win this one-of-a-kind t-shirt next week. So Firebase released a new function type a couple days ago. It's a pub sub function, which allows you to pass messages in between Google services that is also integrated with Google Cloud Scheduler. This means you can run any backend code at a specific point in time using a cron tab schedule. This is great if you know exactly when you want to schedule a job in advance, but I want to push things a step further by integrating Firestore to create a dynamic task runner that allows you to schedule a job at any point in time. That allows you or your users to schedule anything dynamically, such as notifications, reminders, or as we'll see soon, definitely not robocallers. Make sure you have the latest version of Firebase Tools installed, version 6.7, or version 2.3 of the Firebase Functions module. From there, we can initialize a new project by running Firebase init functions. I'll be using TypeScript, and you'll see why it's so valuable for a project like this in a few minutes. Let's start by taking a look at a basic scheduled pub sub function. In the index.ts, I have a reference to the admin SDK as well as Firestore, which we'll be using later. To create a scheduled function, we'll call functions.pubsub.scheduled. The scheduled method takes a cron tab schedule as its argument, which itself is just a string with five slots that represent the minute, hour, day, month, and weekday of the schedule. In my code here, I have the minute set to 30 and the hour to five, so this will tick at 5.30 a.m. every day. But I wouldn't recommend trying to memorize how cron schedules work because there's this app called CronTap Guru that makes it easy to edit and customize cron schedules. From there, we just call on run. That gives us access to a callback function, which can execute background code on the schedule. That's easy enough, but our schedule is static. So what if we want to change the schedule or allow the user to schedule something dynamically? In this demo, we want to build a robocaller that can scale up to millions of phone calls per day and schedule those calls at different times throughout the day. For that, we're going to build a dynamic task runner, and we'll start by modeling the data with Firestore. We'll create a task collection, and each document will represent a job that we want to run in the background at a specific point in time. The first field you'll see here is worker, which is just a string that represents a JavaScript function that lives somewhere in our backend code. The worker handles all of the business logic, and the Firestore document is really just a messenger to pass data to the backend. The next field is status. This will just tell us whether or not a task has been completed or whether or not it's scheduled or maybe it aired out. The next field is performat, which is a timestamp that tells us when to execute this task. You'll wanna make sure that this is a Firestore timestamp to ensure it's consistent across all of your clients. Then the fourth and final field is options, which is just a map that allows us to pass any serialized data into the backend function. So what we're going for here is a generic system that allows us to name a function and then pass some data to that function and have it run securely in the back end on a specific schedule that can be user defined if you create this document in the front end. That's how we get data to the back end. Now we need to execute it by defining a task runner. This is simply a scheduled function that runs every 60 seconds and checks to see if we have any jobs that need to be executed. This function will be invoked about 45,000 times per month, which is well within the free tier on Firebase if you're worried about cost. And you can even use this to optimize cost because you can run multiple jobs within a single function invocation. I'm going to go ahead and create a function called task runner, and I'm going to increase the memory to two gigabytes. That part's completely optional, but if you're running a lot of tasks, you might want to just max out the memory. And then we'll call pub sub schedule, and for the schedule, we'll pass all stars or wildcards. This will have the function tick every one minute. And that's actually the max level of granularity that you can achieve with a cron tab schedule. It's likely that we want to run a lot of different jobs concurrently, so we'll do this inside of an async function. And then we'll want to get the current time as represented by a Firestore timestamp. We can use this to query Firestore for every job that has a performat timestamp in the past. Those are the jobs that we want to run right now. And then we'll also make sure that each task is scheduled because we don't want to run a job that's already been completed. 
This will make it a composite query, so keep in mind you'll need an index in Firestore to run this query. The next thing we'll do is read this collection by calling await query get, and then we're going to make sure that each job is a promise, so I'm creating an empty array here that will be an array of promises that we can execute concurrently. From there I'll loop over every document in the collection, and from each document I want the worker function name as well as any options that we need to pass into that function. We haven't defined the worker functions yet, but we'll do that in the next step. It's simply going to be an object that has a series of functions on it, so we can call those functions based on the object's property name. Now because we're going to force each worker function to return a promise, we can run them all concurrently, and we can also handle the success and error cases in a way that's generic so we can handle it the same way for every job that's in queued no matter what its business logic is doing. In this case, we'll just go ahead and update the underlying document to a status of complete, or if it's an error, we'll update it to a status of error. And lastly, we'll go ahead and push it to the jobs array. And the final thing we need to do from our task runner is just return promise.all with the jobs array. So that's all it takes to create a basic task runner with this new pub sub function type and Firestore. Now it's time to define the business logic for the task runner. The logic will be kept in this workers object, and I'm going to create an interface for this object because it has a specific signature that it needs to follow. The keys can be any value, that's the name of the function, and then the function itself has an options object, which we can use to pass in any dynamic data to the function at runtime. And that corresponds to the options map on the Firestore document. And lastly, we want to enforce that each worker function returns a promise. Now we'll go ahead and define the worker's object, and we'll give it a key of hello world, which is a function that just returns a write to the Firestore database. Let's go ahead and deploy our function and make sure the task runner is working. We'll go into Firestore to the task collection, set the worker to hello world, then set the status to scheduled and the timestamp to sometime in the past. After that, we just need to wait about a minute and then we should see the status flip to complete. And then we should also see this hello world document in the logs collection. In the original video, this is the point where we built the robocaller, but I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. The important takeaway is that you now have a system that can schedule any backend code dynamically. Some good use cases might be allowing users to schedule push notifications, reminders, or transactional email, but definitely not robocallers. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe and consider becoming a pro member at Fireship.io to get access to even more content. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon.